Hey everybody. Hi. We are doing our day five yes, five. update. Day five. Day five of mm -hmm. nine. It was a blessed day today. Mm -hmm. um, Taylor and Ashley Left went back to morning. Northern Virginia, mm -hmm. but they were a big help and a big blessing. Amen. And um, we we're miss grateful. them. And we're grateful though. It was grateful to have mm -hmm. them both out here helping and doing evangelism. Mm -hmm. But the day uh, began with preaching on just the main area. And mm -hmm. um, it seemed like a harder day because while you were preaching, I was trying to give out tracks. It seemed like just harder at the beginning. It's harder to break through to people, harder for people to engage or interact. It seems but like other people, people had other people on the had, team had, had good really time. good days. Yeah. So it's all interesting. It yeah. seems to switch. Some days people have really good days. Sometimes people have a harder day. Mm -hmm. And um, we, I was preaching yeah, for preaching. Uh, quite a while. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, there's engagement today. Mm -hmm. And even some uh, really <laughs> honest, sincere engagement from people that would ask questions that, um, just were like we don't I don't really know what to think about Jesus and um, I'd preach and you know hecklers come by and just when a heckler comes by sometimes the best thing to do is just to ignore him or I'd just say like thank you thank you so much for 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 insulting me that's so nice of you <laughs> yeah you have said that <laughs> yeah and they're just like oh whatever um, but we went down the pier mm -hmm. and it was very well, windy before that oh yeah um, oh Georgia yeah, you want to share that I talked to uh, a Muslim guy briefly um, there's a lot of Muslims because there's this business this surf shop that's like a quote-unquote family business and um, a lot of Muslims work there so I was talking to him and an analogy I used is like if your brother were to write something about you 30 years after you died and say you know some true facts about them or someone else 300 years later were to write something about you and I put in some false facts about them I said which one would you believe and they always say you know the 30 year one by my brother obviously is more accurate and so in the same way I say the account of John and Matthew and Mark and Luke are more accurate they were written right after you know Jesus they ate with him they walked with him they talked with him and so those accounts, so those eyewitness accounts are more accurate than Muhammad's account 300 years later. 500 um, years later. Oh, 500. Well, I got to change it <laughs> yeah. to 500 years later. So um, he still was like, no, no, everything I, I, he's like, I believe what I was taught. I believe what I was taught. I was like, what if what you're taught, what you're, you taught was, what if it's wrong, basically? And he's yeah. like, I believe what I was taught. I believe what I was taught. So I talked to him, but then I, um, started engaging with this girl who oh. someone Andrew had stopped. Well, you were talking to yeah. the Muslim. I was talking to three guys and just remember. Oh, okay. And they all were people that were being drawn to the Lord, 19-year-olds, mm -hmm. best mm -hmm. friends, and they all took Bibles. Oh, and we great. did a little Bible study, John 3, all together, but mm -hmm. they were not born again. Um, one of them started becoming more open to the Lord, going to church, but now he's working. Um, you know, another of them um, grew up Catholic, another grew up kind of atheist, but he said he became more open to Christianity. And we all prayed together. Um, I believe I led them in prayers, just asking Jesus to begin to move more in their life and to bring them to that place of being totally born again and where the Spirit of God would be living in them because they didn't really have an experience with God. They just kind of like knew about it. and. They didn't have assurance of salvation and when that happens it's like okay you know you don't really have um the holy spirit bringing clarity and and um understanding as to what salvation is and that you are truly saved and uh so then right after that after praying with yeah, them yeah i was talking to this girl named georgia so andrew had stopped her but uh she had been sober since march i joined the conversation where she said i've been sober since march and um, I shared I've been sober almost nine years and she said how did you do it and you know I said I gave I trusted in Jesus I cried out to him and I gave him control and he enabled me and she said was it like a spiritual awakening and I was like or a spiritual enlightenment I said kind of Jesus calls it being born again and yeah. so I explained what it means to be born again and how God gave me a new nature and I didn't overcome sin on my own and you joined in and we started talking about um, does she really believe the cross does she really believe that she's and she forgiven? doesn't believe that uh, she believes that Jesus said for sins but, but she's she like I don't forgiven. really believe she's, that he, he will forgive like me. I've done a lot of bad things in life yeah so <clears throat> she didn't feel totally forgiven she felt uh, guilty and condemned and then there was some other things that she brought up I can't remember that we discussed we discussed a lot of different things um, things with witchcraft, things with her past, things yeah. with 
the the father that passed away. Oh yeah, for, and wanting to see a medium, things like and that. And we we're like, you can't do that. Yeah. And she's like, okay. She's like, I didn't look it up because I. I didn't I, want. It. She's I like, if I knew it was the wrong thing, I wanted to do it, and I didn't know if it was, you yeah. know, wrong or not. So. We're like, well, God heard that that prayer and He's answering it now. Or yeah. He heard that thought and He's answering it now. It's so, not the right thing. It was to do. powerful. She was crying like the Lord was touching her. We prayed for her, prayed yeah. with her. Um, yeah, it was a really blessed divine appointment. And there was a Christian actually earlier in the day, who um, I was just talking to him a little bit, and he said, uh, "What's like the prayer of your heart right now?" And I said uh, that I would have divine appointments because yeah. you know I'm out here trying to speak to people. And I just really want to talk to the right person. And this is when I, no one was stopping. It was really hard. Or the people I was talking to like would not relate. Yeah. Like I would talk to them and they wouldn't say anything back. Like so people have difficulty relating in this day and age. People are on another level. So <laughs> to really people like are having trouble maintaining societal or social, social norms. Yeah, or, it's true. It's weird. So uh, he prayed that I would have divine appointments. And then, Amen. and then those, and had them. yep. So praise God. Amen. That's good. So then we went to the pier. Yeah. And we walked up the pier, mm -hmm. sharing the gospel, ministering. Yep. It got windy and kind of really cloudy. Windy. And when that happens on the beach, people seem to leave the beach and not but be But it's excited. really cold out there on the pier because yeah. you're on the water. Yeah, it gets like cold over the when it's really windy. Um, so we were just ministering, sharing with whoever. We uh, met a girl that had a lot of church hurt. She mm -hmm. uh, was a missionary, she said, even to Russia. And she said, places. I used to be, you know, like you, or yeah. religious, but I stopped that. She doesn't preach hellfire anymore, she said. And I said, do you believe in hell? And she's like, oh, of course, of course. Yeah. And we're like, well, we don't exactly preach hellfire either, but you just got to tell people the truth. You can't yeah. have grace without yeah, truth. I you can't have. good. Uh, truth without grace otherwise it's like a plane that um, crashes you said one wing if you have one wing that's grace no truth it crashes if you yeah. have one wing that's hell no grace it crashes yeah so, so um, that was good and then uh, we, we met Justin around. yeah Justin he was somebody that was listening to a lot of Justin Peterson <laughs> <laughs> and was. you know conservatism and kind of this push towards cultural Christianity without like the person of Jesus being central and you know he was like Christian. I believe the principles of Christianity, but he had never really read the Bible. Mm -hmm. He'd never given his life to Christ, and so we spent quite a while sharing with him. And it was like pretty powerful because he was very. He's like right on the verge of giving his life to Christ because he's been convinced that Christianity's uh, the truth, but he doesn't know God personally. And we explained the gospel that you. It's not betterment. It's not fixing yourself. It's coming to God as a and sinner. And it's not trying harder. Yeah. Because he kept saying, I just got to look into this more, you know, try harder. Here. Try harder. Think. Thanks. Yeah. And um, so we actually led him in a prayer to just invite God, Jesus, mm -hmm. to be in, to work in his life. And mm -hmm. he sincerely prayed it, you know, put his hand in my hand. And he prayed saying, you know, Jesus, will you begin to work in my life? He was from Toronto. Um, yeah. And it's really neat, you know, to be able to minister to people from mm -hmm. the entire world you know, on these outreaches, um, because we don't have that experience in Tucson, except at the university. Yeah. I guess people in, from that are in Tucson are, can be from Mexico. But the thing with that is that uh, if we don't speak Spanish, then it makes it hard to minister to them. But yeah. we meet people from around the world, Australia, out here, um, people from other states that are visiting. So it's a really it was, blessed yeah, day. Yeah, it's powerful. It was annoying. There was this one guy who we met the other day who was fishing. And we just said, uh, Jesus was the best fisherman. Let him catch you. Yeah. He's fishing for you. Have you have you been caught by Jesus yeah. yet? He only smiles but tries to yeah. ignore us. Oh, we yeah. talked to the Muslim too. The Muslim guy that was like, I'm from Jerusalem. I'm Palestinian. And, you, you know, remember. three prophets, Moses, Jesus. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, that's right. Muhammad. We talked to him. And we ministered to him. And, mm -hmm. you know, he used to work for the UN. Mm -hmm. He retired mm -hmm. recently. So. Yeah. Um, you know, shared the gospel with him and, uh, you know, just a, a good conversation. Like mm -hmm. he ended in peace and, uh, you know, just told him, hey, you know, God is holy. Sin is serious. And that's why Jesus came to die for your sins. So that because I said, are your sins forgiven? And he said, it's a secret. And he's like, it's a secret. Yeah. He's like, you can't ask me. Yeah. Um, but praise the Lord, you know, yeah. God's moving out there. It's powerful. Every time we walk, you know, people are looking at the cross. People are turning. And yeah. there's this one guy, this couple I saw, I noticed as you walked by, the guy was looking back and he just like kept looking back and watching. He was like walking wow. backwards, practically looking at you in a jumpsuit in the cross while his girlfriend's walking, you know, forward. So I was like, he, I almost said, he's looking at you. He's looking at you. 
So, right. you know, there is real impact. There is real, you have no idea. We have no idea what just the image of the cross is doing to people and how God's working on hearts and minds as they see somebody carry a big old cross. Yeah, it's true. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. Thank you for praying for us. God is good. If you want to support this outreach, you can do so in the link below. I just throw it out there, not because uh, I want anyone to feel forced to give, but because these outreaches do cost, cost money. money. And if you feel the Lord uh, putting it on your heart to give, we appreciate it. Um, and we appreciate your prayers, too, Amen. because prayer changes things. When we have crazy, mm -hmm. demonized people and people start to pray, it changes it. It, it de-escalates the situation. So please pray for our outreaches. Mm -hmm. Pray for divine appointments and uh, pray that the Lord covers our health as we finish out. It's like Amen. a marathon. We have been on a marathon. We went to D.C., went then New to York, York City, and then now we only here. got to go home for, for a couple days. days. We got like a couple days of rest, yeah. and then it's like back here. Yeah. And, um, and so we're still going. We're still going. Yeah. So, so praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. God bless you, everybody. Bye. Bye.